most recently, Ken, we've had Extandi or Enzalutamide approved also in the pre-chemotherapy space as part of the PREVAIL trial. Right, right? yeah, so that, that, that PREVAIL trial looked at about 1,700 patients. Uh, again, similarly to the Cougar trial, you know, they were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to Extandi plus hormonal therapy uh, or placebo and hormonal therapy, and they looked at two primary um, or two co-primary uh, endpoints, which were overall survival and then um, radiographic progression-free survival. And then some of the secondary endpoints were time to chemotherapy, uh, time to skeletal related events, uh, soft tissue response rates, et cetera. And then so what they did is it basically at a pre-specified interim analysis, they, they looked at the study and looked at results and found really that there was about an 83% risk reduction in radiographic, pre, uh, radiographic progression free survival. Uh, uh, and then about a 29% risk reduction in overall survival, you know, risk of death. So again, again, big, big numbers early on, very encouraging for these patients. Uh, also on secondary endpoints, you know, time to keep primary chemotherapy or time to IV chemotherapy was extended from about 28 months from 10 months. So again, big, big changes for these patients. Yeah. And again, I think a lot of us anticipated that, that ENZA or, or, um, uh, or Extandia was going to get approved. It was a matter of timing. I think the urology world probably likes the enzalutamide, but again, they're, 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 both these drugs do have significant side effect profiles and I, I you know I think you have to understand that you know what that as we've talked about in, in prior discussions and tapings that this is not even though it's an oral agent and we can prescribe it there is some monitoring that needs to go along with this I mean this is not like giving somebody an anticholinergic and say hey see you in three months and let's see how you're doing clinically and, and that's one of the things I think as these come out we've stressed to our partners is these really are this is chemotherapy Right. Exactly. You know, so you, there, there's a lot of things that go along with that, even though it comes in an oral form. And, I, and that's something also that we've had to stress to our patients as well is because they think, oh, it's a pill. It must be OK. So again, this is this is chemotherapy for patients. And, and so it's one of, it goes to our, our role of educating both our partners and the patients of, of the monitoring that needs to go on. I, can I just add a comment on that? I think that one of the things that we're struggling with internally with enzalutamide is that the abiaterone thing my partners aren't comfortable with and I sort of adopt them and have, that, that's fine. But I think that the perception with enzalutamide is it's, it's sort of bicalutamide on steroids or you know, it's stronger. <laughs> and the thing about it is that there's quite a bit of drug-drug interactions that you have to be aware of. And my concern is that people are just gonna throw patients on enzalutamide and not really realize or look at the drug-drug interactions. And my EMR is not smart enough to spit that out. And so we have a little cheat sheet that we've developed that says, listen, if you're going to do this, look at the sheet and make sure that somebody's not on Coumadin, for example. I mean, that's like the big one. So I'm a little concerned about that. I'd be curious to see what the panel thinks about, about that particular aspect. Brian, you've used a, a lot of Abby, uh, probably starting to use a little bit more Extandi. What's been your experience so far? How have you set up specifically, though? Because, again, there is some monitoring that yeah. needs to be done with these patients. So we've been prescribing abiraterone or Zytiga for about three and a half years. So my group, mostly me, but now the rest of my partners along with me, we have a lot of experience with abiraterone. And yes, you got to do the monitoring, and yes, you got to make sure patients are on their prednisone, but we have really pretty much protocolized that so that you say you want a patient on Zytiga, their labs are ordered, their prednisone comes with it. We've, we've really got that streamlined and all set up. Um, and we haven't really seen a lot of problems. So yes, we're doing all the monitoring, but patients have done very well. So now Xtandi's around, and I'm actually kind of interested to see what my group does because it is, in some minds, I think, you know, a little easier for a urologist to understand the mechanism and it's like bicalutamide in some ways, which we were all trained with. So it'll be interesting to see going forward, but it is kind of this embarrassment of riches. I mean, you, there is no data to say one should come before the other. Um, it's nice to have two options. Um, sometimes if there's a medication issue or if a patient has a seizure history, well, then maybe Zytiga is better. If they have liver issues or things you want to avoid, in that regard. So in some ways it's nice to be able to have options for your patient and tailor their treatment. See I think that is important and I think it gets lost on a lot of people is that everybody thinks oh we're just going to throw everybody on this drug or this drug. It's like anything else. There is some risk stratification that goes through. I mean you really 
you have to get a history. You have to understand that Xtandi enzalutamide, there are some neurologic issues that the trials were not designed. You know, we know there, that there is a, put, a potential seizure issue. We know that there's some subtle neurologic things. We know even that- Even fatigue. Yeah, you know, and, you know. and, and that people who had a history of seizures, had a history of closed head injury with loss of consciousness, had a history of strokes, were not included in those trials. And so we, we don't know how that drug's going to perform. You know, we also know that, that because of the mechanism of action of abiraterone and Zytiga, that, you know, it, it can worsen congestive heart failure, hypertension, et cetera. So again, I think all of us, if we are going to play in this space, if we're going to be involved in these treatment patch, treating these patients, which again, I'm a firm believer that we should, then we have to be willing to accept the responsibility of monitoring these patients closely. So one thing...